main steam engine that creates the power to move the boat through the water. It is a walking beam engine. Thousands of this type were built between 1830 and 1920, yet only two still exist, the Ticonderoga and the ferry boat Eureka in San Francisco. As we talk about the major components of the engine, a flashing light will come on to show which part is being described. The power for the Ties engine comes from heating water to the boiling point in two coal-fired boilers. This steam under pressure enters the engine through a single pipe and throttle valve located on the lower right side of the motor. The steam then enters the upper and lower steam chest, sending it through valves into either the top of the engine cylinder above the piston or into the bottom below the piston. When live or expanding steam, represented by a red glow, enters the top of the cylinder, the pressure created by the steam's expansion drives the piston down. At the same time, exhaust steam is forced out through valves at the bottom of the cylinder into the condenser where a spray of cold lake water cools the steam, condensing it and turning it back to That's water. What's happening As steam is cooled, it collapses creating a partial vacuum, which helps pull the piston down, hmm. thus adding greatly to the efficiency of the engine. Hmm. When the piston reaches the bottom of the cylinder, the process is reversed. The valves that direct the live steam into the cylinder and the exhaust steam out are controlled by the eccentric that goes from the paddle wheel shaft to the valve mechanism in the engineer's control room. The up and down motion of the piston rod connects to the forward end of the walking beam. The walking beam rocks back and forth, transferring the power to the connecting rod and crank that turns the paddle wheels. The walking beam also transfers power to operate the air pump, which lifts the condensed steam and lake water upward into the hot well, supplying hot water to be pumped back to the boilers as required to create more steam. Excess water is discharged overboard. It was the engineer's job to coax this massive engine to life. To start the engine turning, he used the starting bar to manually operate the valve. On the engine control room wall is a crank position indicator. Watching the indicator, the engineer would work the starting bar up and down, opening and closing the steam and exhaust valves to make the engine begin its rotation. Once the engine was set in motion, the engineer would drop the hooks, which meant he would lower the eccentric arms into place, operating the valves automatically. 